Chapter 2. I guess, suppose we should try harder. Um, hmm. Hey, Dojo, you around? <laughs> I have plots. So this is Dungeon World, yes. guys. This is Dungeon World. This is Dungeon World. There's an entire world full of dungeons and worlds. Uh, what the heck is going on with my computer right now? There we go. Okay. What the heck is going on with your face? Wow. Wow, you can't just you can't just talk about somebody's face like that. I like, love your face. Um, oh, I can post this blue? Okay, hold on. Wait for it. Marcos, please give the uh, her dice back. There we go. Uh-huh. There we go. <laughs> I was no, just testing something, them. though. You can keep them. Uh, fucking savage. Ooh. Yeah, my face yeah. is... My face is fucking savage. Session start. No! <laughs> I think Dojel left. Darn. Okay. Hi, Prattle. How you doing? So. I don't think we have a Laurel back yet. Huh. I'm here. Okay. All right. So, this is Dungeon World, and Dungeon World is a tabletop gaming campaign that we've been playing here on uh, on Sundays. And uh, it's, a, it's a story about uh, 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 some dragons and some uh, dungeons. Uh, but not... <coughs> not... <coughs> uh, not the, the that Hasbro Wizards of the Coast uh, <coughs> game. Anyways, uh, anyways, <laughs> it's it's the other one. Uh. It has Dungeons and Dragons, but it is not Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> it's not Dungeons and Dragons. We all take on the role of characters that we're playing, and we roll dice to determine if we do things or not. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's it. That's really, it's, it's really it. Like, I would give you a catch-up on, like, what is going on, but one, I think Laurel does that, and two, we have a playlist full of all of our past sessions. Um. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons rip off flying reptiles and dank spaces. Dank. So, last week in Dungeon World, uh, Viola, the... Uh, Mistress of Haven, the uh, dragon of life and death, was able to send the party with Jalen, of course, um, to the scene back in time where he and his family were being abducted by a cult and their servants. Um, and so Jalen got to see little Jalen um, being drug away from his mother and sister and teleported to another dimensional world. And he and his comrades defeated the cultists and their, and their orcs and hobgoblins and all their other nasty little servants and rescued his mother and his sister but he was only able to take one of them back to the future with him and his mother insisted that he take her sister his sister uh sorry sorry jalen mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very sure of your masculinity i promise no. um <laughs> and and so with his little sister in tow, they got back to Haven and Jalen uh, took a few minutes to just kind of talk to her and, and assure her and put her in the hands of, of one of the keepers. And then he returned to his group and everyone got a chance to get a very brief rest. Did any of the characters have weird dreams? That sounds this like a, a loaded choice. question. This is a choice. <laughs> you know what, actually? I think this is like the first really peaceful night of rest that Jalen's gotten in years. Absolutely allowed. He's not haunted by the image of what happened in the carriage. I think Alexandra would have had weird dreams, but not weird dreams connected to anything that happened. Weird dreams connected to weird magic. Ooh. What color was the magic that she beheld in her dreams? White. 
very cool. And in her dreams, was she the one uh, casting the white magic herself? Yes. Very interesting. Very good. Rothgar, what about you? Did you anything interesting happen to you last night, dreams or otherwise? Um, yeah, I think Rothgar have been having some dreams. <clears throat> um, he's probably going to have been re replaying the that fight um, a few times because he failed to save Little Jalen. Um, you know, and being that that's that's kind of the, I guess the task he set himself. Like he really wants to go full into this. I will protect that line. Um, and even though he knows, obviously, that you know Jalen gets through that because you know current Jalen. Um, but I also feel like he's probably going to start to get something because of the the curses effect that they had been under him and his tribe. Um, that wearing off, and I wonder if he will start getting some kind of like um, almost like instinctual flashbacks of maybe previous generations of his his wolf line. Um, Absolutely. And um, in those instinctual flashbacks that he had that he had last night, he discovered something very interesting about his particular family. And his particular family, the person of origin was actually a wolf. And it was oh, okay. a wolf companion to a druid. Okay. And this wolf and the this wolf was druid was a female elf who was not tainted by the by the magic. And she had been a guardian of the great forest, much like um a certain person we know is yeah. and she had gotten very lonely and okay. she there in the forest used her druid magic to turn her wolf into a man and they had a child uh, and that was interesting first... yes uh, i like i like In the morning, when everyone wakes fully healed, fully rested, and Jalen will discover that he has a Kefra snuggled on one side of him, and he has his sister on the other. Coo, coo. There is a loud noise outside of Haven pro proper. And there's a lot of people, you hear loud voices and shouts and applause. Okay, so it's not, it's not angry alert kind of shouting. No, no, it sounds like a great deal of excitement, however. Um, and a cat girl rushes in and goes and says to Jalen, your Highness, your guest is here. My what? <laughs> uh, okay. I feel like Catherine's just gonna like wake up and he's gonna be like, and she's just gonna look at it with one eyebrow arch and be like, Your Highness? Huh. That's gonna take some getting used to. Don't worry, I'll, I'll let you practice. Wow. <laughs> she's gonna smack him. He's like, it was a joke. Um, move, move the screen to the left. Un momento. That's, uh, that's a big turtle thing. Oh, Is that the turtle oh. thing? <laughs> Do we have any elves? You know, I think we're all out of elves now. 
We've got no elves, no elves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, Laurel. Ah. If you want to force us to look at anything in Roll20, Shift and Hold Click will force people's screens over to that area. Oh. Can ping it. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, that is good to know. Upon the back of this giant turtle uh, is a male figure that some of you recognize as the leader, as Baron, as the leader of the resistance from down on uh, Rune Shadow Isle. Isle, the Isle, yeah. Jalen looks absolutely pleased to see the guests. <laughs> and there is a limp form in a, or there is a very big sack. Uh, like a burlap uh, sack. Uh, <laughs> he goes, I, I didn't know your travels brought you to Haven. He goes, it's good to see you all again. He goes, I wasn't expecting to come to a place like Haven ever. And you see behind him smaller turtles with all the villagers on the back. And he goes, but thanks to all of you um, and the dragons and the dragon turtles, we've managed to liberate ourselves to the island and we just left it to the elves there are no more humans on rune shadow island and he pats the sack and he goes and one less and one less elf i brought you a present mm. <laughs> He, he's looking a little suspect, and he's, like, looking to Kethra. <laughs> and Kethra just, you know, she, she goes and she shakes her hand. She's like, it's so good to see you, my friend. I'm so glad you guys are safe. Um, you brought us a present? Indeed. Because he doesn't remember his betrayal. He doesn't remember much. I see. And <clears throat> Viola appears and says, I'll take that. And she like literally pats Kethra and Jalen on the shoulders and goes, don't worry, don't worry. I'll take very good care of him. There's a moment where Jalen might wince, but then says nothing in form of protest. And he goes, besides, I think Sidonia wants this one back. Fair enough. She may have him. And Viola turns around and <clears throat> you see a middle-aged knight who's kind of eyeing all of this. And she says, she says, Marcus, will you go grab him for me? And he kind of sighs and he goes and he goes, I don't know what you're doing, but I don't need to. And he goes and he picks up the burlap sack and he puts it over his shoulder. And he walks off with it. And Viola smiles at, at the rest of you and goes and goes, I hope you're enjoying I hope you enjoy your guests. Goes, I'm not sure if they are or aren't going to be able to help you retake your city. But they will certainly help you uh with the great with the battle for the realm itself. 
Kaylin nods. It's like, noted. Thank you. And she goes, now, uh, breakfast is being set out <clears throat> in the council room, and we have a lot to discuss. <laughs> and she goes, but unfortunately, Lilith won't be part of that conversation. She's suffering from Snozzleberry overdose. <laughs> Snozzleberry she's overdose? To, she's, she's going to be asleep for a couple of days. <laughs> this is Jalen. Jalen turns to Catherine and says, but what do you think she's going to do with him? She's going to give him back to Sidonia. Yeah, I know. I meant, what do you think Sidonia is going to do with him? You know, Sidonia things. Ah, Sidonia things. I like it better when I was afraid of magic. It gathers mouth and says, me too is a lot more fun. And she'll wink. And he'll mess up her hair. <laughs> he goes, I was never. Oh, afraid you of will you. pay for that. He goes, I was never afraid of you. <laughs> and he it might be after that. <laughs> Rothgar walks past, like behind Jalen, and uh, you just hear him like whispering as he walks past, like I'm afraid of her. <laughs> And Jalen just kind of looks their hot car over and goes, eh, good point. And back breakfast is uh, <clears throat> sausages and eggs. Is there a cat and... boy here? <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. Uh, although he is now a cat man. Um, and, and someone is joking to him about eating the sausages and you, you see him saying to this, to this cat girl who's teasing him about going, you know, I don't eat the sausage. I, is it like, unless, unless you fix it for me. And she kisses him uh, and ruffles his ears and sort of does a sexy little cat walk away from him. He'll only eat her sausage? And Viola says, yes, yes, yes. It's a family in joke. Because uh, uh. the farmer's wife tried to offer him uh, uh her sausage for his sausage once when he was a young cat. And you see this 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 uh cat boy who's also dressed as an as a knight, as a paladin, going, Viola, I hate it when you tell that story. And he blushes. <laughs> and she goes, This is Sir Bo. He is one of my guardians. <laughs> Jalen, Jalen sizes him up. He's like, hmm, 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 eh. <laughs> funny. Bo does the same to Jalen, and they make the same sound at the same time. <laughs> yeah, Jalen's like cats. <laughs> Alexandra's gonna pull his tail. When Alexandra pulls his tail, he actually blushes. He goes, "Stop that! Tails are sacred." <laughs> I do apologize, just, you know, it's fluffy. After the dreams he had had the night before, like, Rothgar looks over at him and kind of, like, growls a little, and then shakes his head and is like, oh, sorry, I don't know where that came from. It's a cat. And the cat knight's kind of eyeing Rothgar a little nervously. Like, um, is that a, hi, it's nice to meet you growl? 
And he just kind of like laughs and walks over. He's like, sure, let's call it that. And he sticks out his hand and he shakes it. And he shakes Rothgar's. Yeah. And Jalen, Jalen says that he can offer, he's like, I can offer interpreter services, but uh, they're not cheap. And he goes, that's, that's fine. He goes, he goes, so the reason I am here is that I am the only one of uh, the people currently, currently uh, at home um, who have ever visited the former capital city. So... And that was under some very unpleasant circumstances. I, I can't, I actually can't go into the details, but I have seen the city um, where your family used to rule. And I should be able to answer some of your questions about it. Um, and maybe help you come up with a plan of what you want to do next. All right, then. Let's, uh, suppose we should uh, get to work on that, huh? He goes, yeah. He goes, it's, it is, it will be very nice to see Lothric rescued from the cult of Asano. And, uh, uh, Duke, and, and he starts to say, he says, and Duke Aaron Dick, and he goes, oh, I mean Duke Aaron Dale. Right, right. Oh, he, he goes, I, I want nothing more than to, to, than to see my home restored uh, to my family and to its people. And the cat night nods. And that's why I'm going to trust Rothgar. <laughs> uh. <laughs> to help me with some of these decisions. Hmm. Out of character again, uh, Rothgar is been to Lothric, right? We had said that he had used the the Aetherite. I will leave that up to you. Yes or no? Which would be easier for you as a player? I don't I don't always um, use the words easier for the player often. Yeah, she's not kind of a Um <laughs> Hmm I'd we'll probably say he hasn't, or if he has, it's only been to like just the area around the the Aetherite. Um, like he won't know intimate details or, um, you know, the the real layout of anywhere. Sounds good to me. It was <clears throat> it was dark. It was at night. You were teleported into a very specific area and basically to eat, sleep. 10 wounds and then take another yeah. so the city you don't have any sense of, of how big it was no so what would people like to do or ask I, I suppose, I suppose we'd really need to know where to start. <laughs> and Bo goes, well, do you have a battle plan? Um, and what do you think you're going to need in order to take the city? I have never seen the city, so I couldn't tell you. 
<laughs> well, like, where do we get in? Like, does anyone have a map? And as a matter, and he goes, as a matter of fact, he goes, I have an old, he goes, I have an old one from before the city fell to the cult, which I used while I was there on a mission. He goes, but it's not as useful as I wanted it to be because they've done some serious changing of the city. He goes, however, I have actually drawn a couple, a picture based on what I remember and compared it to a picture of what the city looks like or what um, a picture of what the city used to look like that I can show you all that'll help you give a sense of, of all of the changes. Would that be useful? Uh, otherwise, we're blind, so yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to give a little 20 second to catch up. And he goes, okay. So, first. Here is, and he pulls out, and he, he goes up, and he gets a, um, a leather tube, um, and there's a painting inside that he unfurls and uh, pins to the table in front of Jalen, and he goes, this is the painting that I found, that, that I was given of Lothric. And Jalen and Kethra, that is exactly how you remember the city. Okay. As children. Okay. Kethra kind of gets a tear to her and she's like, oh my God, that's, that's home. And she kind of squeezes Jalen's yeah, hand. He was doing the same thing. He was reaching for her hand. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, that's home. And it will be again. goes and this is the painting that i did upon my return oh wow huh. hmm. i don't think this is going to be the home you remember no the energies that are being um fed through what used to be the palace and has been turned into a temple of Vasano goes straight to Vasano's own realm and what i've been able to discover in my adventures with with my companions over the years is that they have been linking the temples up. Um, I've been told that you've been in a capital city in a different realm that had a temple for the Vas uh, a temple of mm -hmm. Vasano and our palace of Vasano. Yes, yes. We have. And, uh... As the realms currently rest upon one another you can imagine that what was your family's palace is like and he actually he grabs he grabs a couple of pancakes off a plate and he goes imagine that each realm is a pancake and he kind of jabs his takes he takes a fork <laughs> and his, that that <laughs> And he and he goes he, and he sees you looking at it. And he goes, it was it was from a friend. It's gift from a friend. And he, he drives it down. And so the can, spork. Can oh, I? Go ahead. Can 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 I have that friend shout from a, a different area? <laughs> yes, yes, you can. <laughs> Don't mock their utility. 
<laughs> uh, so the 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 uh, so it's like down. The handle is down through the pancakes, and he goes. They're lining up the t these places of power in each realm, and you see how I how I painted in those um energy that's being channeled through the palace upwards it's feeding something that's in the center like right through right through reality into another realm and the reason the city has lost all of its life is it's literally draining the life out of the city. The humans that are still there are very ill. And there are a lot of zombies and a lot of undead. Um, I just, he goes, me and among my among my companions is a necromancer and his research into all of this has suggested that it is not irreversible but it does have to come to an end very soon that that and ideally something to be done to bring a lot of life force back into the city. Um, Viola herself, especially life force and nature, uh, nature energy. Viola is the dragon of life and death, but unfortunately, death seems to have been her purview and all of the fights that she has had over the years. Um, she's been having to fight so much for control of, of the local underworlds that she does not have herself the life energy to give to save the city of Lothric. So it will need it will need to come from something somewhere else. I know a dragon. And both smiles and goes, which one? A little green one. Aw. Yet he actually says he goes, Aw His name is Iago. Because I've never heard that name before. He's new. <gasps> really? Then he's not in my book. Nope. <laughs> oh, no wonder Viola was so interested in bringing you guys here. She... she she saved all of her brothers and sisters, even the ones that weren't grateful afterwards. And then he says, even Wero. I don't know anything about moving between realms other than the fact that it's been done to me rather than me doing it. Um, but I assume that if these temples are all sending life energy to the same place, then it's safe to say that there would be a way to follow that energy to other realms? He goes, that makes a great deal of sense. Uh, and, and Viola, uh, who seems to be just coming in and out, like grabbing food and vanishing and then coming back in and grabbing something more off somebody's plate, and chewing it and going in a different direction. She goes, especially if you've already been crossed worlds before. Um, 
So Where is it you're thinking of going? Well, starting at one point and connecting the dots and turning off the valve as we as we go along. Temple to temple to temple to temple. Hmm. Do you every, think we'll have to go back to Farland? Probably. And every temple we take down should make the others weaker. In theory. I hope they don't have an underwater city. <laughs> the alternative is feeding something extremely destructive into that feed and letting it be dragged into the other realms. Oh, that gives me ideas. There... I wonder if I could convince Grandfather to do it. There are people in those places. Alexandra, as you s roll me intelligence, He would, he, if he, if he wanted to do it, he already would have, you suddenly realize, but that doesn't mean he's not capable. And that doesn't mean that you can't figure out how to do it yourself with this new magic that you are waking up to. You know it's beyond your your skill now, but that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be beyond your skill eventually. Uh, Alexander, coming to this realization, is just going to start writing in her notebook and drawing up plans. It seems I've inspired our mage. And Sir Bo smiles, and he goes, mages are very good to inspire. What would be the best way to get us to the temple? And he's like, I assume that the raiding party itself will need to be small, while the other forces could serve as a distraction. He goes, and he... And he, he, he moves to the picture of the, the original um, city. And he goes, do you see that tower there? Yes. And he goes, I believe that tower was, and then he, you know, he actually doesn't know what it, like, he actually knows what it was for, but the player doesn't know what it was for. Mm -hmm. He goes, it's... He goes, that was the Griffin, that was the, the Griffin Keep, I'm told, um, where the, the especially the dwarves used, and their, their griffins did back and forth in trade. He goes, how I got into the city with the companions that went with me is there is a um secret gate that goes in and out there on the map and i had a copy of the key and i wish i had it to give to you now what happened to it goes it was among things that was on the personage of somebody who didn't uh, who didn't make it out. Um, so their do you have reason body. To think they, do you have reason to think that they'd be aware of which entrance you use? I don't think they. He goes. I think they don't. Any kind of magical skeleton key might work it wasn't warded against magic 
and it seems like it was something that um uh the a thieves guild or some the act a black market entrance um we ran into well we hid from a couple of cut purses who were used it to bring goods in and out of the city okay Meanwhile, somewhere else in another building. Have you seen my utility key? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> both brightens. And he looks at the group. And he gestures at, at Kethra. And he goes, You're very pretty. <laughs> I bet if you go in there, and you smile and you make a friend, you can get Faulkner to loan you the utility. <laughs> and Catherine just kind of laughs and says, um, Faulkner? Faulkner. And then she and then he leans forward and he whispers in her ear, or you can try and steal it from him. Sheila's looking she looks very just, uncomfortable right now. She smiles even wider. Says, mm, "I haven't had a chance to steal anything in a long time." What manner of <laughs> what manner of pervert is this Faulkner? <laughs> and Bo goes, "Oh, you don't even want to know." Yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> and he holds <laughs> Catherine's hand. <laughs> What's the matter, Jalen? Jealous? Hmm. I'm still not afraid of you. And he lets her hand. <laughs> <laughs> she says, good. And she's just going to walk into the other room where this magic Faulkner person is. <laughs> um, Kathra, you have a choice. You can roll charisma uh, or roll dexterity in how you want to handle the the person the person in the other room with the utility. Um, you know what? She's going to try her chances with dexterity. Aww. <laughs> Faulkner has a real hard time. She's oh, going oh, to oh, fail. Oh, she she accidentally gropes Faulkner. So, I mean, what? Um, no. I was about to say say uh, Frank would you describe for me what happens when Kethra accidentally gropes Faulkner? He's actually looking for the utility key, so it's not on his person. But it's somewhere in the room, he assumes. He's searching the room. Uh, it's kind of funny that he brought it up at all. <laughs> um, so he's so she literally enters the room with this, this person just frantically searching. And like this it's kind of like that um it's kind of like that scene where, like, he's pulling things out of drawers, and there's a lot of useful stuff that he's setting aside or tossing aside as if it's junk, looking for the piece of junk. Like, he's that kind of eccentric. <laughs> um, Kethra, uh, dis roll discern realities. Yeah, <laughs> ten. You and here just a second, I'm going to So so the options for that that Dex roll is that she either goes to grab something and like he notices or she goes to grab something and it's not the utility. Well, considering you guys have her groping him, I'm pretty sure he's gonna notice. No, 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 because it's not on his person. So she's either, unless she believes that he's holding on to it, he's acting. He's actually looking for it right now. Well, and but, she does. She doesn't know what a utility key looks like. All right. Uh, I was gonna say she could just grab a regular old key. Remind me, what, uh, Frank, what the utility key does look like. It's a spork. It's literally. I was going to say, please tell me it's not the spork that Bo skewered the pancakes. It might with. actually be oh. that spork. Actually, 
actually, you, Kethra, feel a whisper in your ear from Belle that it's not in this room. It's in the other. <laughs> and as you, after you, like, you, you sort of at, stumble into him as you were going to kind of pat him down as he was searching for things. Oh, oh, like, ah, hello? Yeah, that, oh, excuse me. Um, moment. Huh? Where are you? Oh, I'm. I'm terribly sorry. I am. I totally just stumbled my way, way in here. My my apologies. You were. You are not the boy I'm looking for. Shame though. And she uh, winks and walks out of the room. <laughs> strange woman. Where is my key? <laughs> and and Bo yells back and he goes he goes it's probably with your other spork collection where did you leave it this time I don't keep them together it's not a simple spork you know there's a sorting order ah uh, and, and he says to everyone excuse me I'm going to go help him Kether would like to stop him and say before you go may I see that instrument you were using with the pancakes oh sure and he pulls it out and he looks at it lo and behold and he looks at her and he licks it off <laughs> and he hands it to her and he goes goes and he goes Faulkner I remember now you loaned it to Z I would never loan oh me uh, as long as it's uh. <laughs> I mean, she's just gonna take the spork from Bo and scratch him behind his ears and say thank you he purrs <laughs> Faulkner just like throw some things aside step out another door march out Z <laughs> <laughs> and he goes so now then we know how we're going to get you guys into the city. He goes, how to use the temple to, to navigate to another realm? I'm not sure about. He goes, but he goes, there is um, The in the temple is on in one of the towers there. The the one where and he and he kind of tips to it. He goes, you see that one there? They where the the light isn't emanating from. That's where mm -hmm. the aether right is, and you'll be able to use. He goes, I don't recommend using that Aetherite, the one um, that, that you all just just freed, to try and get into the city, because it's, it is guarded. And I think getting in that way is going to attract a lot of attention. But once you have the attention and you want to get out, um, if you lead a group out, I've been told that the, the the gate back at the Red Mountain is now very well guarded, and anyone following you is going to get a real surprise in the face. Rothgar like slaps his hand down on the table and looks to the others and is like, "Well, it looks like we have our distraction. If we are not going to use that aetherite, my wolves can." Well, that's an excellent idea. As long as you don't mind, some of your people might not survive. I don't know if I'm okay with that, Rockdar. I think it's time we redeem ourselves. Jalen just kind of claps a hand on his shoulder in support. I will speak to my people and I will make it clear what is going to happen. I won't force anyone to go. 
it will be their choice. All right. Um, and he's like, what about the dwarves? You think we can get some air support? And as you as you ask that, um, Bo Bo looks looks questioningly at at the group, and he goes he goes. I can send. I can uh, get a message to them, um, and and find out and have them if and arrange for a specific time and place. When would you like for this to all go down? We want no attention on where we are entering the city. Um, so, and he's, he's thinking, he's like, the Aetherite is going to be inside the walls. Um, hmm. If he, he says, if the dwarves move in first, that would bring their attention out to the walls into the skies. Those that use the Aetherite could then strike from behind and flank them within the city. And we could get in, hopefully, unimpeded. And Bo smiles and nods and goes, that sounds like a very good plan. And there's some things that me and my companions could be doing to help you as well and create another distraction on the other side of the city as well. Where, and perhaps with, with all of these things going on at once, they won't even know where to be looking and where their forces will be scattered. He goes, goes, what I would suggest, uh, is it, is it Sir Rothgar? Just Rothgar. Goes, just Rothgar. Goes, Rothgar is to give your wolves, um, is to have them attack from to enter the Aetherite and attack. Um, but I will also make sure that the the that they could actually perhaps use it as a trap and and rather than holding their ground within, that they they attack, they strike, they pull forces to them then they step back through and return to Red Mountain and the, a dwarf legion will be there and perhaps there can be a slaughter on the other side um, and that would save that would save at least some of the lives of your people as well as pull them out in a way where we do know that they are that that um and then, of course, you know, they can always go back in and join you when you're so ready to, to, to secure the, the palace as a whole. He goes, I do know that there is a high priest of Vasano, and, or I should say, a high priestess of Vasano. And she is acting as Duke Arendale's consort. And her name is Marala. And she is a tiefling. Do, do you all know what, what they are? Hmm... Jalen does. Actually, he has reasons to know that. Yeah. 
I don't think Rothgar would. Because she, her people, um, were originally humans who were uh, any kind of size in a very sad way, and he says, taken as sex leaves by by the demons, and their children became the tieflings. So they are demon blooded, and their own race now. <clears throat> And so she is is demon blooded and a high priestess of the Sano. She's very powerful. Sounds like she'll be a bigger four than the Duke. He goes I know he has some magic of his own, but it's nothing like hers. However, what I learned, much to my own regret, is he wears a ring of protection, and he's immune from magical weapons and magical attack. Fortunately, one of my friends used just a used a plain old butter knife, and he lost an eye. You didn't see that coming. All right. Catherine just elbows Jalen. Really? This this priestess is she the one that is controlling this energy that's being sent? Yes. Hmm. Do we need to keep her alive to allow us to pass through? Because I don't know. I don't know much about these things, but I understand, Kethra, you're a priestess yourself? Indeed I am. Do you know? Hmm. I'm not sure. Sounds like a time. Sounds like something that you would commune and ask, and just need to take yep. need to take Bell a secret. Oh God, <laughs> a secret. You have a few. All right, I think, yeah, I'm gonna have to take a take a little break and commune with Bell. Hmm, what secret should we take, Bell? As, as um, as is like Kethra like walking from the room. Um, yeah, I think that she's she's just kind of gonna put her hand on on Jalen's shoulder and be like, you know what, I'm I'm gonna need a minute. And she's just gonna walk out. Like she's not gonna say anything. She's just gonna leave. Rothgar's gonna chase after her and uh and like grab her by the shoulder and turn around and uh just gonna like look down at her hands and be like, do that that thing where you, you look in my head. What? Remember when we first met when you you spoke inside my head? Oh, you really want me to do that? Not very many people do. Oh, okay. He looks he, he looks very uncomfortable, but yeah. He says do it anyway. All right. She's just going to place a hand on him. Roll intelligence and nope. Oh, God. Nope. Well, there goes that plan. So, as you're doing that and as you're looking into his eyes, and you're you're getting into his his head for whatever reason you end up in someone else's head instead oh god and worst of all it's joe 
Oh no! <laughs> and Joe is still in bed with his wife. Oh no! No! no, 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 no. <laughs> you have a flash of of gecko man and gecko woman sex. <laughs> And, and you just hear, you just see Kether's eyes go real wide. She goes, ew, ew, no, no, get out of my head. Uh, <laughs> like, Rothgar stumbles back. Like, J- like he thinks J- it's been him. Jalen looks to, to his Rothgar. What, what, what do you, what, what? Did Jalen also follow them out? No, because she didn't make it out. He stopped her. Oh, that's right. Okay. So Jaylen... I, like, I just instantly let go of Rothgar. But like, no, no, it just... Oh god! Um, okay, out, out of character, out of curiosity, seeing as as you are of the lizard people, Laurel. Yeah. Um, is is there anything uh, particularly peculiar or secretive about, about the way that lizard people? Oh, work? good <laughs> she point. Could offer as a secret to Belle. That's that's going to be a secret that Catherine takes to keeps to herself. Okay. She is going to take that to her grave, and like, there's no way she can bleach her brain from that. <laughs> Okay, my, my plan kind of worked either way because I was going to have Rothgar show her the dream of how his people became a thing. Um, oh, yeah. As like the secret of their origin. That was what I was going to give her to offer to Belle. But, but yeah, gecko sex works, I guess. No, no, no. She, no. She won't offer it? She wants, no. She wants to hang on to that? Uh, you see, at this point, Catherine's just going to feel a buck hit her head. Ow! Hey! Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Go off of that. Oh, okay, thanks. Who was it that threw the book? Alexandra. It was Alexandra? Okay, I just wanted to be sure there wasn't like another cameo happening. <laughs> <laughs> you never I don't know. have any characters to cameo with. No, but you have plenty of NPCs. <laughs> no, they're all dead. <laughs> oh, rip. So yeah, Kether is going to uh, find a nice, quiet place in Haven, separate from everybody, and she's going to commune with Belle. All righty. And uh, Cecil says hi. And I believe there is there isn't a role with commune itself, correct? Um, nope. no. 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 Um. And as you you reach out and you give arcane secrets to Belle. Um, Belle, you feel yourself slipping into a vision. And you are back in a temple of Belle, back mm-hmm. in Far City. Um, and you are, you are cloaked and you are praying to her there. And a shadowy cloak feminine form appears to you in the vision. And she goes, she goes, Basago is still not aware that I am aiding his enemies. He's still allowing the worship of me. In in the cities and he thinks our bond is true as my priestess if you are able to slay this tiefling you should be able to take control of the temple but once you do so Vasago will be aware of my treachery. And things will be harder for you and I in dealing with him thereafter. Mm. I leave it to you. Daughter of a hundred daughters. To decide. If the price is, if this is the time for us to pay that price goes you will not be able to rend the stream but you will certainly gain the ability to use the temples to travel yourself and those you care for 
that secret will be yours. Hmm. So question out of character. Does that mean that we have to kill the priestess before we can secure the other temples or just the temple in Farland? Just the temple to secure the temple here in Lothric. <clears throat> in Lothric, that if, okay. That if you get rid of her, then you'll be, and then you'll you secure the temple in Lothric, mm -hmm. you will be able to then use the temples to travel up and down the tree and get to, into the other cities. That you yourself will be able to possess that that magic and that knowledge. Okay. Alrighty. Meanwhile, what is the rest of the group doing while Kethra is is chatting up her goddess? Rutger is sitting in the corner by himself, wondering what the hell was so scary in his head that she saw. <laughs> that was a strange reaction when she tried to look at his head, and she never told him what she had actually seen that it nope, was nothing to no, do with him. No, she didn't. No, so now he's just like, I, what did I do? Yeah, and actually Jalen is, what did you do? What did you do to her? <laughs> I swear, nothing. I, I just wanted... I just wanted to show her the dream I had. And Alexandra, what about you as these two are having this conversation? Well, while those two are having that conversation, she kind of slams her journal down on the table and just says, I've got it. I know how we can do this. And inside the journal, there's just a really crude drawing of just like, uh, like this stick figure stood next to the the beams of light and then just the demons like melting <laughs> roll your wisdom don't botch no, thanks yeah that's gonna be a botch <laughs> that's instant roll xp curse the dice <laughs> Ooh, that is not a botch not a botch that was close when Laurel says the words don't botch, three more parties queue into Orem Vale. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was more of a Tamtara. Yeah, Laurel. So describe what? for me Alex <clears throat> Alexander's plan. Her plan is to do kind of what she did when they were back in time with the rain. Just uh -huh. to do that, but instead of it raining on the city, sending the rain through whatever link this is to the other places. So just rain in multiple places at once. Yes. And it's gonna she's she's worked out it's gonna take a hell of a lot of power. More than like she herself has. Like do we need yeah, to find her? She's probably oh, gonna need a couple of mana batteries. She's going to need a god. Don't worry. There's there's several running around. Huh. <clears throat> yes. Absolutely. So, Catherine returns and sees poor Rothgar being harassed by Jalen. <laughs> And a very triumphant look on Alexandra's face, and a um, a drawing. Basically, as as Keth was walking in, Jalen is, is is saying to Rothgar, uh, "If I don't know what you dream about, if what you dream about does that to her, and I'm not sure, I want to know." <laughs> And Catherine comes back in here and is like, what are you talking about? What did he do to you? Oh, he didn't do anything. Um, let's just say I probably can't ever look M M Brother Joe in the face again. 
this really confused look is on Jalen's face. He even does that head tilt that dogs do. Huh? <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you when you're older or never. Um, anyway, I think I know how. I think I know how we can do this. Um, it means no help from Bell after this, but it also means that we can teleport between the temples if we're successful. And she's going to tell her, uh, tell them, the group, everything that she saw in the vision. Recap. So we kill the priest. <laughs> we kill the priest and gain that knowledge, but you lose your connection, or at least it becomes a harder connection with Belle. Yes. Or we don't kill her and lose the ability to travel through. Or let me let me as as a storyteller uh, um, temper uh, temper that a little. It'll be where it isn't that your connection with Bell will be damaged, but Bell is now going to be under attack of the Vasa- from the Sago herself. So her power <laughs> to assist in general will be more limited because she is now going to be instead of being his his <laughs> betrayer that he thinks is an ally she'll be under attack for right. will that be only until we deal with like these the portals and stuff or is that that, that is not clear hmm. probably as long as he's yeah, you know as he is a, a demon here. scorned mm. you mm-hmm. never know a demon lord scorned Yeah, that's the only thing Rothgar doesn't like about this plan, is it's not... It doesn't feel like a final solution to to this. You know, we're only sealing him, I guess. Taking away his, his connection. He's still going to be around. Oh, indeed. This is not actually a solution to how to deal with the Demon Lord himself, but how to cut off the power so he's no longer siphoning it from the world. Yeah. So that probably occurs to you in all of this is that there's still the demon lord himself to contend with. I don't know if we can take on a demon lord. No. That is that is that is that is still beyond your pay grade. Okay, well, we'd rather be <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. And she pulls out the sport the bow handed her. Yeah, see, what you need to remember about that spork is uh, it's where it's been. And, uh, you know, Bo gave it a pretty good lick earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Jalen is eyeing the spork. He's like, that's a a strange eating utensil. It looks like a broken spoon. That's that's our answer. That's our way in. According to the cat boy. Begin to think I don't like cats. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess it's time to put what we do know into motion. Um, Freeing these cities in these worlds might not get rid of a demon lord or whatever, but it will sure do a whole hell of a lot to weaken him. I'd say that it'll stop his powers. Hmm. Or at least slow them. I don't think I don't think we will ever be done fighting him, nor will our later generations. But, uh... No. Be nice to have a... a, a, a (laughs) some firm ground to stand on. Agreed. If nothing else, it sounds like Lothric can deal with his power there much longer. Let's go. And Viola uh, 
<laughs> appears almost like magic. <laughs> and says and creates a portal. And she goes she goes or, or starts to create a portal. And she goes, All right, this won't I won't be able to keep this open very long, but it should get you close enough. She goes, You're still going to have a day's worth of travel. Um along along the along dealing with the mountain itself. And she goes, I would love to send you to send you kids closer. But that's at the point that I take the risk that the the portal is sent and you guys go out and someone else comes in here. And we just cleaned up from the last attack. This happen often. <laughs> With Wero as a brother, all the time. What is that guy's problem anyway? He didn't like Iago either. Well, he liked Iago. He wanted to keep Iago, actually. She, goes, she sighs and she goes, My brother is the dragon of war and chaos. You know, if you want us to uh, backhand him with a little bit of this life energy we're going to be stealing, I'd be happy to. Oh, no, no. That that wouldn't help him. Help against him. Uh, he, he would probably enjoy it too much. She goes... She goes, but on the other hand, It wouldn't. I wouldn't say no if you gave me a little bit of life energy. <laughs> the cat. <laughs> the cat. <laughs> yes, Bo, you have something to say. Yeah. <laughs> Mom. And Bo like jerks his head up and blushes and goes, "No, no, no, sorry. I was, I was just, just contemplating something." Do you all? <laughs> Do you always meow when you're thinking? Sometimes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh. There's nothing to apologize for. That just, just made it better. What other, what other <laughs> game? What other game brings cats to the table? You know what I mean? <laughs> God, I see so. I mean, it, it doesn't even have to be Bow. It could have been one of the invisible cats. Oh, that's right. Congratulations, Cecil. You're internet famous. So where is this portal taking us? The portal is going to take you to... You see the, the, in the dark picture, the uh, uh -huh. uh, river of lava? Yes. You're going to be on the other side. Like, okay. Like if there was a spot, like, yeah, here-ish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so where you're going to be far enough away that you'll see the city, most definitely, and see the glowing towers, but you're going to have some scrounging and figuring your way across the river of lava, blah, blah, blah. Okay. okay. And we're going to take a two to three minute break right then and there before okay. people go. Oh, no, before we do that. So waiting for you is Aaron and his group of fighters. And he says, we would like to come with you. When you go. Uh, you, well, yeah, you have a place at our side. And he claps his hand on, on Jalen's shoulder and goes, thank you. And Rothgar, you have an opportunity to talk to your own people. And they all volunteer. They all oh, want thanks. to go. There's, there is not a hesitation among them. 
and uh, so Viola opens their portal first, and Bo goes with them to talk to the dwarves. Mm -hmm. And they're going to leave about an hour before you guys do, so that they can set things up on their end. Yeah. And Alexandra's going to send word to the mages to, you know, get ready for battle. Yes. How long has it been since... Yeah, this has only been like a day after we rescued Jalen's sister, right? Right. Yep. Okay, Jalen's actually going to stop to have a talk with her before he leaves. Absolutely. Yeah. So the first portals, the first portal that Viola makes isn't yours. It's to get other pieces of the puzzle um set up yeah and you get the message back from the mages and from your grandfather that this sure sounds like a lot of work and he hopes that these people are pay are paying you well in in either loot or lore or preferably best and he just... wants he wants a detailed list of everything you're getting and uh, she's just gonna write back to him and just say they're paying us in titles. Now shut your trap and get helping. And, and he actually sends another message back, um, and it goes, "I'm already the great arch archmages of blah blah blah." He goes, "What title can I be offered that's better than that?" The title where you save the prince and help him retake his kingdom. You could be labeled as a hero and not an asshole. And it comes, and they, again, it comes back. And he goes, but I like being an asshole. He goes, you keep the title. I want to be paid in books. Oh, I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll let you have some books. It's too bad this is all written correspondence. Yeah, Jalen, all you do is you see, like, literally these messages appear with little wings on them, like little flying scrolls, and then they poof. And then a minute later, one poofs back. Yeah. And, it, and, and this is, like, going back and forth with the speed of people texting each other. And as it's going on, Alexandra looks more and more frustrated. Uh. Bad news from home? Just my grandfather. He wants to be paid in books. I mean, the dwarves did have a library. We could probably work out an arrangement. I don't think he means that those books. Uh, Jalen, you might want to keep the royal library on under lock and key for a while once we retake the city. Noted. He'll get his books, but he will not get the books uh, that he wants, because he was not specific. Alright, I'm going to take a two or three minute break, and then we will uh, pick back up. And everybody think about if they, while I'm gone, if there's anything else you want to say or do before your group heads to heads to the city. Uh, I like turtles. <laughs> he actually it kind of sucks that we've had so little time. I wanted to have Rothgar speak to the Haven Smith after seeing those armored wolves. In the... Yeah, uh, yeah. He's, it, even Jalen's just like, he's like, man... Man, even the knights that were protecting me back then had cooler armor. <sighs> and then he looks down at his fey armor and he's like, ah, it's okay. <laughs> well, you see, Marcos, you may not be able to get uh, a new weapon or armor, but I can enchant your weapon. Or curse it, whatever. Yeah, why do I regret saying that to you? <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> Now, does Jalen actually say that out loud about the armor being cooler? Only if Rothgar talks about wanting some. 
he's agreeing with him that it was pretty cool. There yeah, you. like he'll 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 look down at himself because he's in yeah, pretty much just leathers and uh, and his uh, the wolf skin. Um, so, so yeah, then yeah, he says. It. Then looks to Kefir. <laughs> he goes, "We need to get you something, uh, everything proof." Yeah, Catherine's just going to pat Jalen on the shoulder and say, don't worry, once you're prince, I'm sure you'll have access to all, or once you're king, you'll have access to all the armors you want. And then she frowns at the we need to get you something, everything proof, and she says, you do realize that I could die doing this, right? Like, we could all die. Uh, That's a very real possibility. Right, and you've been really eager to try to die before this point. That's why we need to get you something, everything proof. I'm not eager to die. I'm eager to protect you. You have a kingdom to take over. I can take a hit. And I am back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. He goes, I just worry about you. And I worry about you. I mean, which one of us is going to teach Iago about girls? Oh, that's definitely going to be you. Because I've done oh. such a smashing job. I don't know. You've done all right. And she just kind of winks at him and just adds scrub. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything anybody wants to do before you leave? We had just been saying that... Um... If there had been more time, I was going to have Rothgar speak to, like, the armorers at Haven after seeing those, the the wolf bodyguards that were armored out in the past. But, yeah, they're not going to have time to do anything with that, so. There, you can set this all to go into motion the day after and give time for your people to be equipped. There's no reason where that th- where there's, well, the timeline is short. It is not, this has to be done today or the world ends. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like it's going to take time for like the dwarves to muster and yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway. So this can be set up. Uh, what would you guys? What would you, Jalen, prefer? Attack is set up to arrange for it being three in three days in one day. Uh, three days. Alrighty, three days. Um, so that is going to give you all some time to uh, coordinate with all of your people and get um, equipped. Is there any of the player characters who would like new armor or weapons? Now would be the time. There's Rothgar. Yep. Rothgar wants some of that wolf mail. He it wants... is yours. Yay! And once he has it, that's when Jalen's like, now you look like a proper knight. <laughs> I think, yeah, maybe maybe I should start having Sir at the front of my name. And then he like struts around like half, you know, pretending military walk kind of thing. Jalen draws a sword and says, okay, Neil. Wait, what? Neil. And he does. Jalen knights him on the spot. Jalen, what title do you give him? Well, I give him sir. (laughs) Is there going to be anything else, like champion of the realm or... Not something until we're definitely. done with the fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got to earn his dude name. Yeah. Yep. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a deed name out of this. <laughs> yep. yep. All righty. Kathra, at some point during these three days, Joe just takes you aside and puts an arm around you and goes, that wasn't on purpose, right? No. 
No, it wasn't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and he gives her like it gives her like an uncleish hug. And he goes, That's that's okay. You just caught me a little off guard. Caught you off guard. This is where Faulkner walks behind, walks by, stops to Joe, stops at uh, Joe's side, and goes, "Have you seen Z?" He goes, he goes, <clears throat> yes, but she told me that if you were looking for her, not to tell you where she was. That thief. She's with Azriel. No wait. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then Joe goes, ah, oh, poor Bo, he'll be so jealous. Eh, key stealers. And he turns and walks off. <laughs> and then, and then he smiles. He, he kind of smiles at, at Kethra, um, who overheard, who overheard all of this. And he goes, he goes, goes they're all really good friends in fact you and you and your people remind me a great deal of them and my own party my own former adventuring party in case you ever wondered though if it's worth it when the day comes to put your daggers in your and your traveling gear away and settle down and start a family, it is absolutely worth it. And Kether just kind of looks to Jalen and she says, I know, I can't wait for that day to finally come. And finally, the morning comes where this is the day where everything gets put into motion. All the other, you get messages. The mages so kindly sent along to, with the various groups that have been set up to work on this invasion, um, one of their own message, mas me message masters. So a Alex, you are going to be able to send uh, uh, flying scrolls back and forth to the other groups. Your grand, your grandfather kindly provided you with the components and the others with the components so that you could send a dozen messages back and forth each. Well, that's the least you could do, lazy bugger. I mean, what? What? Damn arc mages. I know. So let's go. Just... Don't be in such a hurry. So eager. All right, and then it's it's you guys and a smiling Viola. And she opens a portal. And in you go. Everybody make a defy danger roll for me. Dex or constitution. Uh... Well, nobody saw that deal roll. Nobody saw it, okay? Shit, <laughs> wrong stat. Is the modifier the same? Yeah, it was the same. Oh, wow. But my second one was even better. Hey, 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 Laurel? Yeah? I catch Kethra. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you a choice. Um... You can catch you can catch Kethra and take 
half the consequences that she would have. Or you can let uh, Alexandra catch Kethra and take no consequences because she got the highest role. But I'm the only one that used Dex. <laughs> Um, hmm. Jalen catches Kefra. Can I catch Jalen? Yes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you come out of the portal, and Kefra, for whatever reason, you were just a little too close to a cliff edge. And you feel your feet giving way out from under you. But Jalen grabs you and yanks you back to, to him. Um, and as he's yanking you back, um, Alexandra steadies him. And so you're all, your heart's picked up pace a little bit and you're looking down at a very long ravine drop with lava um but you're fine i got you i got you <laughs> who's a good puppy <laughs> <sighs> just this once <laughs> Well, figured I'd get my one in since we may all die here. Let's not do it here in this exact spot. And uh, he reaches into his bag of adventuring equipment and pulls out a telescope. Time to see Where what we can see. did you get Because I went shopping. <laughs> shopping? You While you were busy flirting with the lizard man. What <laughs> flirting? I, you know what? Never mind. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> What's up, Aaron? How you doing? Welcome. We're doing some tabletop. Yay. Um... And he, he, he wants to, he basically wants to discern realities on the city. Absolutely. Discern realities. Yay, 11. <laughs> Ask your questions. All right. We got, uh, let's do, uh, what should I be on the lookout for? There are, you are close enough to the city to discern movement along the walls. And you see how in the picture, the walls have like that um, reinforced, it looks like, um, upper part with the spikes and all. Uh-huh. The heads that you see over that reinforcement look very much like um the kind of walking automatons that guarded the temple in Far and Far City. Okay. Back then as you were um a young gladiator and thief, you you were told that those things were undefeatable by anything mortal. You are now a, cre a, a character of much more heroic power. You know they're not, but you also know that fighting them would be... It's better to avoid them than engage them. All right. Uh, next is what here is not what it appears to be. 
the it appears as if there is no walkway across the um uh lava like the bridge had been shattered but you've sensed magic and when you point it out to alexandra alexandra is the one that's actually able to realize and i'm not even going to make a roll for it uh because this is a freebie um that there is a spell of invisibility over an actual bridge now that doesn't mean she can see the bridge but she knows there is a bridge and there's a spell of invisibility covering it mm. uh let's see you guys think you should go with what is about to happen or what is you what is useful or valuable hmm hmm Useful or valuable? Yeah, I was thinking that. What here is useful or valuable to me? The spikes along the wall are made of the the reinforcements that are there are made of soul steel and this time it is kethra that kind of gets the whispering in her in her ear um that a powerful enough spell to remove curse um or a restoration spell which is beyond her current power but may not be beyond her power if she is able to take charge of the temple would allow her to free the souls that have been transmuted into soul steel and restore them to life or at least free them to pass beyond to the dead or ally themselves as ghosts to your cause. Okay. Uh, Jalen actually steps back and points out, like he hands, he passes around the telescope to people and he points out the, the heads of the walking automatons and he says, those right there, we do not want to be caught by. He goes, you can fight just about anything else in there. He goes, do not get their attention. He goes, they are, uh, they are made of, uh, he's like, he's like, they're made of gear and clockwork and things that I do not quite understand. Rothgar is kind of like, like making fists with his hand and opening that and like after you saying that he's now kind of itching to go and see if he could but yeah he's, <laughs> he's following your orders like he's just like hmm i wonder what if i really couldn't take one of those kether sees this and just places a hand on his shoulder and says nope you don't want to mess with that okay um maybe another time he also, he also, like, I don't know if Alexandra mentioned that it's an invisibility spell on a bridge that he kind of picked up on. No, she hasn't mentioned it, but okay. she's started to walk out onto the invisible bridge. <laughs> no, that case, you need to make a perception roll, Alexandra. Wisdom. Time. Oh, good. A stat that no one has. <laughs> Is that it's wisdom? Okay. Yeah, it's yes, wisdom. Yeah, yes, it is. Oh. Alexandra. Oh. Alexandra, you you feel 
feel the magic and you start walking uh, confidently forward. However, the magic doesn't, as, as I commented before, doesn't reveal exactly where the bridge is. Um, I roll a catch, sir. Yeah, roll dex, Jalen. Um, and so oh, nice. your first confident step hits the air, and you start to go right off the cliff. I grab her by Jaylen her shoulder to pull her back, you. right? To pull her back, and just as, as she's upright again, he goes, good dog. <laughs> uh, Rothgar and Kethra both roll wisdom. Finally. Wow, Dio made a good roll. What is this? Dio's gonna get in the speed running. Oh Whoa, my gosh. Marcos. <laughs> uh uh Kethra, you're the one that actually finds the, the, the front of the bridge. And Rothgar like just runs across. Like he like he points out like the way he just hits his like like um a sense of true direction and he's able to lead the rest of you guys across just uh, instinctually yeah. knowing I, I have a quick question like he watches Kethra as she as she goes out and you know like finds bridge and then he turns to Jalen and like it's just like the cliff <laughs> it just goes sprinting forward so I have a quick question Absolutely. can I can I pull like Indiana Jones and like throw pebbles across to make, that's, see if we can that's that's <laughs> actually that's actually what like even even with them standing on the bridge Jalen actually stops to grab a pebble and starts chucking it up forward and he realizes <laughs> that Catherine's doing it too just looks over to her like <laughs> you know so that you you guys can see it <laughs> <laughs> Alexandra just keeps poking the ground in front of her with a scythe. She's not gonna miss up this time. She's just like she's using it like a like a walking stick. Like a like, okay, there. <laughs> there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we venture across. Now, you're on an invisible bridge, but you're trying to make sure that you're not seen by sentry. <laughs> Dio and Marcos don't have to roll at all. Their wisdom was so high. Jalen, now you and Alex make stealth roll. So that would be dex-based, I suppose. Yes. For sneak. Because I don't have a sneak move. Fuck it, good enough. Across the bridge you go, and you're able to start making your way towards that tower that had been pointed out to you. And Kethra, when you guys get there and you kind of move some brush aside, you see it's it almost looks like an oubliette because it's the, the grate is on the ground. And then there's a jump down, and there are some spikes below that need to be missed or jumped over um, or otherwise dealt with on the top. Um, but you have no trouble using, using the spork, which transforms when you put it, when you put one end of it in the lock into the exact right shape you need it to be. Okay. And now you guys are facing needing to jump down into an oubliette and uh, not skewer yourselves. How would you like to do that? And ensure in the same time, nothing bad happens to your fellow party members too. Can I try and cast slow fall on the party? That is one absolutely good way of doing it. Uh, 
That is a minus one, but that still makes it an 11. Those of you who don't know, newly it is a secret dungeon with access only through a trap door in its ceiling. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that word that I had to Google it? Yeah, Laura, Laura was trying to be fancy. <laughs> Theo, you're geek. You just lost a geek point. You're kind of geek. <laughs> there aren't oubliettes in Star Wars and Star Trek, okay? <laughs> That's true. I bet there's an oubliette in there somewhere. Kirk They're was always getting that. themselves in trouble. <laughs> You're an oubliette. Get your oubliette out of here. <laughs> oh, wow. My face is a secret dungeon. With the... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wait, what? It's okay. I still love you. You're still my favorite. Oh, I love you too. All right. Uh, I suppose, let's see, that's an int roll to take care of the spikes, huh? Yes. That, that was to give everyone slow fall. Yep, slow fall. Oh, okay. So, so I just... you guys are going to be able to literally just kind of levitate down instead. And that goes very smoothly. Huh. I feel lighter than air. Rothgar the... looks around. It's like, nice of Bo to tell us about the spikes at the bottom. Can't trust a cat. Maybe he didn't know. He came this way. Maybe things have changed since he's been here. Then that's, that's not good for us. The spikes seem to be made out of that same metal that was along the walls. It's very... If Does anyone want to touch one? No. Out of curiosity. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I volunteer Rothgar. Fine, Rothgar touches one. <laughs> it is very cold to the touch. And you feel a spirit inside of it in terrible pain and agony. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, like, like, the metal looks unusual, I guess? Like, Yeah, it's a very, it's, it looks, it, it's like silver, but it has a very unusual sheen. And as you peer yeah. down, and I know it's dark, but, but you're, you have wolf sight. Mm. Um, you actually see little, like, face appear or a hand appear, like there's something within it trying to fight its way out. So that's when he, he like, you know, just cautiously reaches out and touches it and uh, immediately jerks his hand back when he when he gets that feeling. Uh, and yeah, he just kind of mutters himself, this, this place is so wrong. Hmm. There is a narrow tunnel. Do we have one that we can look at? Or no? No, okay, okay, good. We do not. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm doing a... the proper camera work. There. <laughs> there. Put that back on screen. All right. Um. I guess. But that does remind me that I there's something I can do here. That is reveal areas. Reveal the group. But we have no Yumi. And I wait for it to turn around. There we go. There are your tokens. And there's your tunnel. Whoa. 
What? Wait, 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 wait. No, Lilith is not here. And I nope. won't control my token. Oh. <laughs> you know, I was so proud of everything I did last <laughs> night. That's what I didn't do. <laughs> fine, fine. You people Does talk it... to each other while I fix your tokens. <gasps> to be honest, I just thought she may have given my token to Frank again. <laughs> I can't imagine you would suggest that I would do such things. I'm kind of tempted to have Roth uh, Rothgar go wool for this. Rothgar could go wool. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to go full wolf just for the uh, the hearing and the, the increased senses and stuff, I think. Uh, do you want me to roll for that? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Because for Rothgar, it technically works like, like the Druid shapeshift, so it's done off of the wisdom. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Karen. At least with the party smaller, it uh doesn't take <laughs> so long. Do this. And when Rothgar like shifts down to his wolf form, Kether just kind of smiles and like scratches behind his ears and is like, "Well, looks like uh we've got our eyes and ears now." He does that thing like with his back leg where it starts like twitching. <laughs> what the? What? And that's okay. that's Baron and his people. Baron and his okay. Um. Oh yeah, I forgot they were with us. Yeah. Yeah. It is time for somebody to volunteer to make another discern realities check. Uh I made I made one, so I it's, I'll leave that off to somebody else. Oh, Kathra apparently there we go. Kathra. Discern realities on this tunnel. What should we be on the lookout for? Guards. Okay. And um, traps. Okay. What here is not what it appears to be. The uh, tunnel is dark and dank, but up ahead there is some lichen that you recognize a uh, tripwire and some air holes um and it looks like a very basic kind of thieves guild trap you have nostalgic lessons in fact of being taught how to how to set and um disarm that kind of that kind of trap you and Jalen both and Kether just kind of shakes her head and she says, oh, amateurs. Um, what here is of use or value to us? The key that you possess, your utility key, is probably is going to be able to unlock any door you need in this entire in the entire former palace so don't lose it cool. apparently yeah, no. it seems to apparently it seems to like to vanish on people <laughs> fair enough so i'm just going to turn to the group and say all right um we need to be on the lookout for guards for traps 
And uh, yeah, guess what, Jalen? Some of those traps are very, very uh, similar to the ones we learned about in the Thieves Guild. So this should be, I don't want to say a cakewalk, but it shouldn't be too difficult to navigate. All right, then. Uh, then uh, then Jalen is going to start uh, feeling his way forward. Feel your way forward, sir. Rothgar is like right in yeah. either next time or behind him, depending on how well, how wide the the hall is. How? Uh, it's it is wide enough for one at a time. Okay, mm. then he's right behind him. Sword is drawn, by the way. All right, and, and it's not glowing. <laughs> excellent. Make decks for a sneak check. Everybody gets to make a a, a roll for a sneak check. Uh huh. Ooh. <laughs> Kathra! Take your XP. What goes wrong? Kathra finds herself stepping on a trap. <laughs> oh no. Everyone make a defy danger roll. <clears throat> Minus. One. Huh. Defying danger with? Dex. So it's dex. your normal dex roll minus one from your from your total. Oh god, this is gonna hurt. Oh no, I'm okay. Nine. Okay. Ethra, please! <laughs> oh, no. Kethra and Alexandra roll 1d6. I'm scared. God damn it, Dio. We can be <laughs> down with your rolls. Oh no! Catherine doesn't didn't uh, uh, hit you with an arrow, Alexandra, but you get hit by an arrow from the side, from a little <laughs> shaft tool. Um, both of you do, as she steps on a wire, and all of a sudden, arrows come or bolts come whirling out. Everyone else. Uh, ducks or jumps or is just in the right place at the right time and the two of you get slammed with arrows and there is now a sound an alarm sound and you hear a great a door at the end of the tunnel abruptly opening up all right well it's is there enough room for, like, Rothgar to, to get past Jalen, like, to force his way yeah, past? Jal Jalen puts himself flat against a wall. That's actually how he avoids the arrow, the bolt that comes from him. Yes. Yes, there okay. is for you to get... To and because get I'm in my will form, I'm guessing I might be low enough that the arrow just goes over me? Yeah. Yes. Um, um, I am off down the hall. Rothgar, pick me a number between one and six. Um, three. One, one, two, three, four, three. Uh -oh. Wait, map stuff again. <laughs> map stuff again. Oh no, not these guys again. Oh no, not yes, these guys again. These are the exact oh. same. You have a flashback, Jalen, as soon as you see them, of that early mission that you and Kethra yeah. and, all, and all your friends back home went on to a mansion and having to fight some undead. Well, these are the same type of undead soldiers. 
Oh, he gets a flashback of getting hit in the back with a fireball. <sighs> uh. Alexandra? <clears throat> it was one time. That, now that you mention it, she's pretty pissed about the bolt. <laughs> Jalen is actually like against the wall, flat against the wall, as Rothgar moves past him, and he looks back at them and he goes, Are you two okay? Yeah, yeah, and it's like Catherine's like pulling arrows out of her armor. <laughs> and Alexandra just says nothing and is just channeling a fireball. Channel that fireball. Channel Jalen, it. Jalen remains flat against the wall. It's a nine. It's good enough. And what would you like to do with your fireball? Hold on a sec. I'm just gonna throw my tags on. No problem. Uh, I'm gonna give it the ranged tag. Gonna give it the piercing in the plus one d8. But Laurel. Yes. Because I rolled a 9, you get to choose either Piercing or 1d8 and remove that tag from my spell. So go right ahead. I am going to remove the Piercing. Alright. And there's my damage. Which of the three skeletons were you aiming at? Honestly, Alexander was in a bit of a rage after being hit by an arrow suddenly. Uh-huh. So it's whichever one happened to be unlucky enough to be in the way. Whichever we're one gonna is take closest out... to her. We're going to take out the archer. Ah, uh, yep. She saw a bow. She saw a bow. <laughs> <laughs> Roscar, you're charging yes. as a wolf. Yes. Pick a pick a target. Um Let's go let's go to Sorty Man. Sorty Man Yes. Okay. The one with the two swords? Yes. 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 Um Let's see. Hack and slash your little paws off. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I picked up a new move last time and I'm wondering. Uh, okay, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're just going to go hacky slashy. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to jump onto him. Sounds good. And then... Roll the damages. Excellent. <coughs> you... Ravage him. And turn him back into bones. Jalen? That leaves a one. Uh... Can I and get... Rothgar is now, yeah, out of okay, the Okay, I was about to say. Um... So he's turning to face Rothgar. All right. And doesn't even seem to see you. Well then, uh, hello, signature weapon. It's nice <laughs> to meet you. Sword. Sword, 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 sword. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Ten to hit. This is, uh... Actually, that would be eleven to hit. I forget that the sword is precise. Uh, so I'd roll dex instead. Huh. Alright. Roll damage. Ten damage.
Hello. Hello, and the room is free. Yeah, he just and... he just brings down the sword, and as it connects with the undead, it shines. Because, you know. Yep. And from there, you see a stairs that <clears throat> lead up. I'm going to look back to the others and make sure we re we're regrouping. Well, we, we don't have time to uh, to linger. Um, if you guys can, if you're not hurt, then we can keep moving. Yep. And Baron leaves one of his people behind to guard this area and guard the gate. And leaves. they have um, one of the messages that, that was left to send a quick message to uh, Alexandra if they need to, with a warning, if anything shows up here. And I'm going to slink my way up the stairs. Slink, slink. Slink, slink. Ears are forward and nose is sniffing. And you go up the stairs. Um... And roll, roll your discern reality. Nope. You don't see or smell anything unusual. What you spot is it looks like this was a former um guard room and there are a couple more of those skeletons there but they are lined up against the wall with their um <clears throat> and a seem to be almost inert like they're you know how 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 almost like suits of armor, except they're uh -huh. just skeletons, um, dressed in armor, with weapons that are lining the wall. There is a dozen of them, but they're not moving, and they don't have glowing eyes. Hmm. Is uh is Jalen able to understand me in this form? Yeah. Yeah. I'd assume okay. so. Yeah. Did you follow me up? Yeah, he's actually following close behind, yeah. But okay. is, is everybody following up? Yes. Yes. Slowly, but Alexandra's bringing up the very All right. Okay. Yeah, so as a, as a, <clears throat> as I spot them, like I stop and uh <laughs> growl at, at Jalen like uh are these hmm these look different. Might I roll discern realities? Yes. Uh. <laughs> Can Catherine give it a shot? Yes. There we go. Kathra, these are have been set up like constructs where um a necromancer or some kind of someone with 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 um necrotic magic uh would basically use a spell to spark them into an attack and this could be done from a distance or currently but Current right now, it seems like there, no one is there to do so, and that would need to be within line of sight of them. Um, furthermore, it's probably a not a bad time to just uh, de burn them all. That way, they can't be reanimated. Okay. 
So I'm going to turn to Alexandra and say, so um, you like fire, right? Fire? Yeah. yeah, see, our friends over here, you know, the ones that look like they're sleepwalking or, you know, standing still. We need to set them on fire and we need to burn them into charcoal right now. All of them. And Alexandra, you can A, cast a spell, or B, pull a kitten out of your pocket. <laughs> she is going to... Uh, uh, Laurel? Yes? She is going to pull the kitten out and cast a spell. Excellent. Lionel! Is she going to polymorph the kitten again? She's going to polymorph herself. So imagine, if you will, and I'm going to... No, no, no. Roll it. Roll it, because it'll be hilarious if you botch. No, just... Oh, no. <laughs> Laurel, stop Hashtag the B word. players. Laurel, yeah. fuck you. Laurel, yep. you said the word. And three groups just got into Autumn Vale. <laughs> Polymorph normally works so well. And the magic goes out of control. And instead of polymorphing yourself with the kitten into hands, you double the number of skeletons that were oh, in the room. <laughs> and worse, you activate them. Oh, God. What? So there's 12 now, you say? So, so, hold on. First off, how? Magic is magic. It's Your magic how? went out of control. Wild magic. It went yep. wild I, on I you. Yes? I swear to God, if you say do not botch one more fucking time. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Something I'm going to make Bo roll decks. Something up. <laughs> Jalen, who got a bad discern realities roll, but is still kind of like sniffing around, is like, something must be different up here. It's interfering with... Oh, God. Did <laughs> <laughs> you say, oh, God? And Alexandra, when she realizes this, is just lucky at the arrow, just in pure fury, and just rips it out of her side. I just... It burns it in her hand. I was too quick in deleting those those guys from the map. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> because I we're just gonna do this. Copy, paste. One, two, and as I could just go ahead and talk to yourselves, I'll be, you'll have a GM in a minute. <laughs> I'm entertaining myself. Laurel? Oh, God. Yes? Uh... Laurel? Yes? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Laurel, no. Oh, yes. Laurel, no. Oh, some... Yes, yes. We need, to, we need to see more of the map. Oh, you're going to see more of the map, trust me. I don't want to see more of the map. Laurel? I like this little bit of the map where it's just <laughs> nope, us. Nope, nope, nope. Pook asked for more map. Wow, Pook. Uh... He just turns to Alexander. You had one job. <laughs> Jalen snaps his fingers and goes, she works with illusions. They're probably not real. And Alexander just looks Jalen in the eyes and is just like, uh, nope, they are real. <sighs> Very much Nice so. attempt, Frank. <laughs> nice unfortunately oh with magic there's always a downside and that's what I get an arrow in the side those are fancy as fuck what is that so so your 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 skeletons are not so dapper yeah they are I like this really short one here we're gonna name him Bob <laughs> <laughs> um they have they have weapons like the other ones um but I now have props for you all you are now in, a, in the middle of a room, back to back, uh, surrounded by a dozen skeleton warriors with glowing uh, blue eyes that are now charging you. Heirloom, I consult what my weapon. What do you do? Uh, 
I consult my weapon. Hack and slash. Like, you your weapon. It's like, Kevin no, draws her sword I, because she's so afraid of magic this close quarters. I'm actually using a move. <laughs> I'm going to talk to the spirit of my weapon, roll charisma, and on an 11, the GM has to give me a good detail on how to get through this. I don't know, bro. You're fucked. I'm out of here. And your sword runs away. <laughs> cast. Have Alexandra try and cast fire on the weapons. Flaming weapons would be your friends. Also, the kitten. <laughs> so Jalen, Jalen is like holding the sword across both of his hands. And it's like it's lightly glowing like that blue light. And he, like, closes his eyes for a second, which is really dumb to do when you're in combat. But then he opens them again, and he goes, and he turns, and he looks over his shoulder, and he goes, enchant our weapons. <laughs> Please tell me that wasn't the right roll. No, no, that was the right roll. And you guys are fucked. That's a constitution roll? Oh, yeah. Alexandra's pretty fucking pissed. Oh, no. She, is that Alexandra Frenzy? <clears throat> <laughs> you may have stopped giving a fuck. Oh no. <laughs> well, this is where we die. Um, Alexandra a, a cast, is, is starting to cast her spell. But as she's casting Whoa. her spell, Alexandra, roll 1d10. Wait, wasn't that. Was, yeah, that's was that actually a, a that's, roll to that's cast? That's not a spell casting roll. Oh, that's a roll of yeah, that Alexandra really... hates us all right now and is is doing nothing. That she doesn't hate everyone. She's going to be casting a spell. Yep. So you're but... starting to cast. I'm going to be instead of you casting a spell. Um, roll one d ten. Because no botch goes unpunished. Or, I mean, no plot isn't... Er, two. You're not able to, because suddenly, for just a moment in time, you're frozen. Not as in, as a paralysis rather than a freeze spell. And another figure enters the room. Oh, no. So... Alexandra is losing her la is is losing two turns to paralysis. And you have no your weapon is still glowing, but everybody else's aren't Jalen. Rothgar take an action. Yes. Um what what can you tell us about this new figure? Do I need to discern realities on that, or do we get details? You, it is a cloaked figure with a magic-looking staff and a magic-looking glowing hand. It is does not appear to be alive. Kethra and Jalen recognize. Um, the sigils. Of, well, no, no. Everybody's seen it at this point in time. Um, its wrinkled skin is etched with runes to Visago. It is some kind of wizard priest. It is not the high priest. It's just it's someone who's basically at the same level as Kethra and Alex are. Okay. Um, is he the one in control of these skeletons? You're not sure. That wouldn't. That that's a pretty safe bet. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're all kind of backed into a circle, and uh, so many targets to choose from. And then suddenly, I spot this guy between the legs of one of the skeletons. Uh, and he obviously looks possibly in control. Um, and I picked up a move last time called Enter the Fray. 
when you charge headlong into the midst of the foe, name one enemy. You close the distance between you, uh, no matter how far it is or what's in the way. Uh, roll constitution, and then I pick a couple of things. Oh, um, that sounds like a very cool move. Yes. So I am I am going for Priesty Man. Uh, I just want to bar him away out of this circle and uh, I see if I can deal with him. Is he new priest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Seamus. So you're going to make a roll on that. Okay. Um, so there's three options. Uh, you inflict your damage on the named enemy, you isolate the enemy, um, and you aren't exposed to danger. And I pick two on a ten. So I'm going to inflict my damage um, and I'm going to be, I'm not exposed to danger. Okay. Uh, and I also need to make another constitution roll for something else. Wow. That's a 10 so, of that, okay. Rothgar, I would like Rothgar to start blowing on Kethra's dice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the damage. Hello, oh. there we go. So, okay, yeah, so I, I just like barge my way past those two skeletons and uh, leap on the robed figure and just, yeah, try and tack him with teeth and claws and just rake him as much as I can. You succeed in doing that, and by doing so, you break his concentration, and Alex is freed from the spell. And Alex, you are going to be able to take an action now. Um, but first, Kethra. Yes. Um, you know, Kethra is really afraid of hitting target, single targets with magic or like friendly fire. So she's actually going to turn with her back to Jalen and aim a magic missile at one of these guys in the back. Good to call. like these Good guys call. here. Yeah, we're forming like a little triangle here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Oh, nice. Roll your damage. And magic missile does 2d4. Do four points of damage. That's what she did. Exactly four. Laurel, stop calling the dice. I'm really good at that, aren't I? Yeah, it's almost like a magic stop. power. L, <laughs> I promise I'll stop telling you not to botch. By the way, L, it's your turn. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to cast a spell. Do it. Oh god. Oh god. Ad Laurel. <laughs> oh god. Yes, my darling. Alexandra's in a bit of a frenzy at the moment. <laughs> Understood. She's essentially going to surround herself in fire and just send fire out in all directions. Oh. Uh, yeah. Party members. Roll defy danger. Probably Dex. Although, or Khan. Kathra! Catherine. Catherine's just gonna just Catherine, you know set herself Catherine, on fire. We are going to have a talk. Jalen is want actually you to hold diving. Jalen is actually diving to tackle Kethra. <gasps> because you know. All right, uh, Jalen, roll. L. What is your normal damage with a fire? With fire. Uh, one d eight is my normal damage. Uh, Jalen, take 1d8. I assume this pierces armor. Actually, Laurel, this is an interesting thing to bring up. Are they still affected by my arcade armor? 
the party members? Yes, I have a. Uh, I picked up the advanced move that spreads my arcade armor to nearby party members. Um, you. I will give you an opportunity to do that after this. No, is, um, it, is it passive? It's Unless passive. It's a passive. Yeah, it's oh, pa in that case. It would just be Jalen gets two magic armor. Oh, Jalen, okay, so everybody gets two magic. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, so, yeah. So yeah. Ba basically, like, at all, like, he, that, that's just, he's, he's, he's diving on top of Kethra, and he's taking the, the, the brunt of it. Uh, and so fire just, like, sears across his back. Kethra, you are in that position you've been in at least once before, where you're on the ground and Jalen is on top of you. And you feel the heat of the the magic go across you. Go across it him. But magic uh, at the same time as, as her spell hits, it hits the it hits um mage armor and you can see that glow as well. Jalen still sounds very uncomfortable. But yeah. And Kether in an attempt to ease Jalen's comfort just smirks him and says, Honey, not now. We're a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> and Rothgar, roll 1d4 for me. Sure. Very nice. So, Baron and his people have... those three engaged and are working on them. So you can just imagine, if you will. Yep. And yeah, so that's going on so, there. So that's going on in the background. So that's where things are currently. And we will go back to... What, what about the fire? Uh, the fire. The fire. So, the fire. Uh, Alex, roll me 1d8. There are the skeletons burn so hot and so bright. And I could imagine that, Alex, are you actually yelling as you rage at them? Yeah, she's just yelling obscenities. That as you finish your curse upon them themselves, they have all those have turned on into ash. And the spellcaster that was um, uh, dealing with Rothgar turns in your direction. And Rothgar, yes. that means it's turned on her and it uh -huh. is not attacking you. So it is your turn. Okay. Um, you said this thing was using a staff, right? Yes. And okay, um, and does the staff appear to be doing anything? Like, it, it glowing, is now. Right? It is starting to glow. Okay, that same um, blue as the eyes of the zombies. Yeah, I have a move called Blade Breaker. Um, when you attack an opponent's weapon, roll strength. On a ten plus, you shatter their weapon and deal your damage. On a seven to nine, you shatter their weapon. Either way, the enemy gets to make an attack against you. So basically, okay. I want to get I want to get rid of that weapon, and I want him focusing back on me. Do it. Okay, so we are rolling strength for that. Uh, 
nine. Alrighty, yeah. remind so me. That, uh, so with that, the the I don't do any damage, but his his weapon gets destroyed, um, and then he he gets to make an attack against me. First things first, roll your constitution. And this is because you're shattering a magic weapon. Um, yep. You, your jaws are powerful enough to snap it and you feel that uh, necromancer's energy basically flood out over you, but it does not cause you harm by just the unleashing of the magic itself. Okay. Um, but as you do that, he, he whips back around again and starts chanting and cursing and roll your constitution again. And if you get above a 10, you're going to take half damage. Okay, this is fucking rigged. You're... <laughs> <laughs> uh roll 1d6 so this instead of being a 2d6 spell is a 1d6 spell um Five. and you have mage armor so you only take three points of um black magic just tears okay. into you. Jalen. Mm -hmm. You're on top of Catherine. What would you like to do? Uh, there's two different answers, and one of them is not for this situation. So he's going to stand up. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'll let you stand up as kind of a free action. Yeah, she gets she she makes her remark and he just he just actually just kind of grins and stands back up, um, and even offers her a hand back up. And then she will take it. She will take that assistance. He's gonna turn to face the other three. These three, uh, you know, so they have to okay. Do yeah, these guys right here, um, and uh, huh. He would like to just bum rush into the middle of them. He basically wants to see if he can catch one or more of them and, like, charge the wall. Just shove them back into it. Absolutely. Hack and slash. Get above a 10, and that's exactly what happens. How about a 14? How about all three of them? So he's, like, just shoulder down, just, like, arms out. Just, ah! <laughs> roll damage? I will give you roll damage. Uh -huh. I will give you a choice before you roll it. Okay. You can split it. You can use it all on one of the three, or you can use it on two of the three, or you can split it on three of the three, but it'll split pretty much evenly rounded down. Um, I will. Split it between the three. Okay. Because this is going to be 1d10 plus 1d8 plus 1d4. Because somebody's bloodthirsty. 13. <laughs> hmm. So they each take four points of damage. Uh huh. And that was enough. And meanwhile, here in the back, those have been dealt with as well. So, there is one very pissed off uh, um, wizard priest. And, Kethra, it is your turn. Let's see.
Catherine's going to charge at him with the sword. Because she's kind of pissed off and just wants to run him through. Hack and slash, baby. And she is going to fail miserably and take her experience. Roll one. Roll your normal damage. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you charged. He flung Rothgar in your way. Oh! Tele like, telekinetically. Oh, your no! Your blade goes straight into the wolf. Um, am I getting armor on that? Yes. Yes, you are. Then the blade does nothing to me. You have Excellent. five armor? I can't, I have seven at the moment. What? How did seven armor? Oh wait, armor? wait the um the uh mage armor doesn't doesn't stack no, against It's not even that. I have seven base armor. I currently have four because I I got the scale mail back at Haven, which is three. Uh I get a point of armor for the, the wolf pelt I'm wearing. And then because I'm in the fourth stage of my rage. I gained oh, constitution oh, armor, which is three. Okay. So I currently have seven armor. You don't hurt the puppy. You only <laughs> stab the puppy. Or your plate or his body blocks basically blocks your blow with the puppy. But there is no there is no stabbing into his into his form. Excellent. Excellent. Alexandra. <laughs> Are you still enraging? She is slowly walking over to this figure with a rather troublesome looking grin on her face. And she's going to grab this figure and just pretty much light her hands on fire. Def roll Defy Danger to start that off with. Uh, can I constitution it? No, because you're grabbing, or you're going to try and grab him. So, well, actually, I'm yes. going to think that yes, yes, you can. You can roll Constitution. Oh, apparently it doesn't fucking matter anyway. Because Laurel, you have cursed my rolls. You, <laughs> both of you. All right. <clears throat> uh, L, roll one d8, please. I have leveled up just off of botches. You walk towards it. It raises its hand, and you know how it had whisked um, Kethra? Or it had whisked uh, Rothgar right into Kethra? It whisks you and throws you, so you basically knock one of these guys over, and you're on the floor on top of it. And now it's turning itself... To Jalen. Release the fire cat. Yes! The, the fire cat runs out of your pocket going, Rawr! Mew. <laughs> uh, All right. Then I am going to try to slip around him with a grapple from behind to hold him in place for the fire kitten to deal with him. Um, roll, roll to find danger to Khan, or, or Dex. Uh, Khan. Seven, I defy. You are able to roll and to grapple, but he gets a chance to act. Okay. And his, uh, roll 1d8. Seven. You uh, deduct your armor from that. You too go flying backwards. Uh, I will use my human racial ability. Once for battle, you may reroll a single damage roll, yours Absolutely. or someone else's. You can use that. Three. I take no damage. 
Excellent. You all take no damage. He retreats up up the stairs. Scaredy cat! And that is where the cliffhanger that we are going to leave things on. I was telling Frank last night that if there's a chance we're going to have Dragon Star next Saturday, and that if we did, that I was going to pause um, a tabletop unless we had a cliffhanger. But this definitely counts as a cliffhanger. So we will have Dragon Star. We will have Dungeon World next Sunday, same bat time, same bat channel. Awesome. Okay, fine, be that way. <sighs> well, uh, so that's going to be it for stream, guys. If any of you are still hanging out, thanks for listening to our little story time. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how this continues to go, then uh, next Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific is normally when this starts. Um, uh, we do stream a little bit before that, usually, but uh, yeah. That's for tabletop. And I would just like to point out that Jalen can be jealous for a week, as I'm currently lying on top of his girlfriend. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Alexandra's getting frisky with one of the human rebels. Um. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, see, tomorrow I might have to do some stuff in fourteen. Uh, maybe another Mario speedrun as well. Who knows?